Christmas day in my house, we always have turkey, but we always have lamb shoulder. I love lamb shoulder. I think there's a great balance of fat in there and it's really easy to cook. It's a real simple recipe and you can prepare it all the day before. So it means on Christmas day, it's a simple case of putting your shoulder in the oven and it's job done. It's just one less thing to worry about. So we've got a fantastic lamb shoulder here. Um, don't need to score the top of it. The fat's gonna melt away when we start to braise it. And you just need to get yourself um, a roasting tin like this, like one you'd use your roast potatoes for. You can get a slightly deep one, slightly bigger one, but the important thing is that the shoulder sits in it nice and snug. Okay, so we're gonna prepare the vegetables very simply. Your basic root veg. We're gonna roughly chop some celery. So and this is gonna go in. You're gonna roughly chop some carrots. That's gonna go in. Okay, and then you've got a bulb of garlic. You're gonna not use the garlic, so there's no need to peel it or cut it up small. You wanna keep it nice and chunky. Just cut that through the middle, put that in. And then an onion. There we go. And then we're just gonna add some rosemary, because rosemary and lamb are fantastic together. And then we're gonna add a little bit of thyme as well. Now, whenever I do this, I think it's really important to put the herbs underneath the lamb so that the real flavour imparts on the bottom of the lamb as it cooks and cools down and you can discard them again later. So there's no reason to chop anything up small at all. Um, so now, ready for your lamb shoulder. That's going to sit in there nice and snug. And then we've got some um, chicken stock here. For this size shoulder, I think you're probably going to use probably uh, about two pints. But if you're a little bit short, you can happily use a little bit of warm water. It's not a problem. I'm just going to pour this down the edge until it sort of half fills the vegetables. And the idea is we're gonna cover this in foil. So when you wrap it up, you're gonna trap the heat created from the liquid. It's gonna cook the vegetables, it's gonna steam the lamb, it's gonna melt the fat, and you'll be left with this wonderful piece of meat. Now, the only other thing I would say is when you're wrapping this up, you've gotta make sure that it's nice and tight. If you only use one layer of foil, there's a chance the foil may tear. There's also a chance that it won't cook correctly because you're not keeping all the heat in. So just to make sure everything's okay, two layers of tin foil wrapped nice and tight around the edge the best that you can and now this is going to go into the oven for three hours on a braising temperature anywhere between 150 and 160 degrees so now the lamb's in the oven uh, lamb obviously goes great with mint sauce I always make like a half mint sauce, half pesto. Um, and again, it's something you can make well in advance. And again, it's really, really easy. So it's one more thing less to worry about on Christmas day. And it tastes fantastic. It's well worth the effort. It's much better than anything buying shop. So we're gonna start. You need four cloves of garlic. They're gonna go in the blender. You also need 160 milliliters of good virgin olive oil or rapeseed oil. Okay, you're gonna have 80 grams of almonds. Now, you can cook these and toast them, but I prefer them without, so you can go on like that. Uh, you need two lemons, okay? So you're gonna put in the juice of one. Juice of one lemon. Okay. And then you can use the zest of another. And then you're gonna have one fairly large bunch of mint. This is quite a large bunch, so um, I'd probably use about half of that, but I never really measure it, I just put in what I feel is right. And then you're just gonna pick down half of the leaves to go in this. And the best way to pick mint is you wanna hold it by a pinch at the top and you just wanna pull your fingers down and you'll just strip all the leaves off. And you're left with a little bit at the top. Pinch, twist, turn it off. That's all you need to do. Peel the leaves off and go in. There we go. Right, so now we've probably put in about half of this mint. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna blend this up until it all starts to come together. Okay, so now this has come together, you can see 
that it kind of resembles the base of pesto. Now, the reason I'm putting all the mint in first off is because if you put all the mint in and you blend it up, you're gonna lose that lovely color. So the best thing to do is to give it a little bit and then for the rest of the mint that we have here, we're just gonna pick them off, all the leaves, exactly the same way we did before, and then we're gonna chop them coarsely with a very sharp knife. If you don't chop mint with a very sharp knife, what happens is it goes black and then you'll lose that fantastic color and you'll lose all the freshness that goes into that. Okay, so now you've got your mint picked down. All you wanna do is scrunch it together really lightly and we wanna make sure that we're not gonna bruise the mint. And we're just gonna chop with a very sharp knife, kind of coarsely. You don't wanna go really fine on this. You want it to still keep some of its shape and texture. Give the sauce a lovely body. Put your fresh mint into here. So now all you're gonna do is you're gonna mix in this fresh mint into your pesto base with your almonds and your lemon and your olive oil. And it will give you a fantastic thick mint sauce that you can serve with your lamb or you can serve with your roast potatoes. It's just a bit of a winner really. It can go with most things. And the best thing is as well, that it can be done well in advance. So that means that when Christmas day comes around, you've got your mint sitting in the fridge, you can have your lamb ready and you're good to go. Now, normally needs a little pinch of sea salt just to finish it off, like that. And there you go. There's my mint sauce pesto. So now you've made your sauce, this will stay in the fridge nice and fresh for up to three days. This is our lamb that's just come out of the oven. Um, it's finished cooking. It's gonna be very hot underneath here. So whenever you take foil lids off, make sure you take them off towards you as you get burnt with steam. Um, and you can see, we still got a little bit of liquid left in there. And the lamb, it smells amazing, but it's nice and soft all the way through. You can tell it's cooked. That's the best and simplest way to tell if you're not sure if it's quite ready. Um, and it just falls apart, look, so soft. So what we're gonna do with this now is we're gonna take this out of here and we're gonna put it on a plate. Now, you could serve this straight away if you wanted to. You could put it back into the oven if you wanted to, but this is the stage you're gonna take the lamb shoulder to if you want to put it to one side and then use it again. So we braised it down. That can now be put in the fridge and set ready for Christmas day if you want. And remember, you can do this beforehand to give you one less thing to do. So this is the lamb here, okay? Once it's been in the fridge, it will look like this one. So it has shrunk a little bit where some of the fat has rendered down and you've got the skin which has become firm again, but it's exactly the same as the shoulder. All we've done here is put this one in the fridge overnight and this will keep quite happily for a few days before Christmas. So come Christmas day, you've just got to put it in the oven, and bake it, crisp it up, and it's one less thing to worry about. So we're gonna put this oven in a minute to show you the end product, to serve our wonderful mint sauce we made earlier. Um, and this one's gonna go in the fridge. So, roast potatoes. Probably just as important as the meat when it comes to Christmas day, or on a Sunday roast, they are everybody's favorite. Um, another little tip you can do, which will make life easier. Again, taking a load off for Christmas, making everything easy so you can enjoy the day and spend time out of the kitchen. You can actually parboil your potatoes and let them cool down the day before, which is what I do. Which means, that, again, there's one less thing to do on Christmas Day. Now, we're not gonna show the peel in the boiling because everybody knows how to do that. But the important thing is that you take the potatoes as far as you can. So be brave with them. And if they start to mush up and they start to have flaky edges like this, and they're very soft, that's exactly what you want. Because the fluffier they are, the crispier they're gonna become. Now, you can do them on Christmas morning, but there is an advantage to leaving them to Christmas Eve to do. The one thing that stops potatoes from going crispy is the steam that's generated from your hot potatoes going into the hot oven, and they don't start crisping up until all that steam has disappeared. So if you're letting them to cool down the day before, you're putting a cold potato with no steam straight into a hot oven and they're going to crisp up a lot quicker and you can take them further and they're not going to fall apart because they've had time to set in the fridge. So we're going to bake these off in a minute and we're going to show you how they turn out. Um, the only other tip that I've got for you really is a lot of people use goose fat or duck fat or put semolina on. Um, everyone has their own way of doing it but personally I think um, a very old fashioned ingredient, beef dripping, just adds such fantastic crispy outside and a real richness of flavor. Um, especially if you're using a combination of different potatoes, you get some that are extra crispy, some that are fluffy, some that are flat, and you get all the crispy little bits sitting in the edge of the tray. 
So we've got our um, waxy red potatoes of any variety, and I use uh, a standard white potato, which is like a King Edward or a Chippers potato, something like that. I cut them to even sizes, put them in your pan, so some garlic here, because it's big enough to discard again, with thyme and rosemary and plenty of salt. Boil up your potatoes, put them into a colander, give them a shake, and let them sit there until they go cold. And then keep them somewhere cool overnight, whether it's in a garage, outside in your barbecue area, until you're ready to bring them in, into the fridge, until they're nice and cold, and then you'll end up with these potatoes at this stage. So it's just one less thing to worry about on Christmas Day. I'm gonna show you how these turn out in a bit. Your lamb's out of the oven, it's been cooked at the same temperature as the potatoes. They take roughly about the same sort of time. Cook it anywhere between 180 and 210, um, and they'll both be ready. This will be beautifully crispy. And your roast potatoes here, because we've used two different types, all we've done is cooked them like a normal set of roast potatoes you would, but with beef dripping instead of duck fat or goose fat. And I've turned them regularly every 10 minutes or so. Um, but they cook a lot quicker because they're cold before they go in. So you've got some wonderful different types here. You've got some real crispy ones. You've got some real fluffy ones. You've got some smashed up ones. You've got some real jagged ones with sharp edges um, because you're using two different types of potatoes. So we've got a mint sauce from earlier. So this is how it goes in my house for Christmas day. Everything goes in the middle. Everyone helps himself, which means it's one less thing for the chef to do. And you just pile up all your potatoes on this side. Pile up your potatoes, just like that. Okay, we'll pull this out of the way. And then we're gonna add your mint sauce. Now, you can keep it on the side, but I just put some nice, healthy spoonfuls on top, just like that. So it starts to warm through with the lamb, and there you go. That's what Christmas looks like in my house. Merry Christmas from the old Ken Bot.